And God wants to move in people's lives. In fact, the Bible tells us that, that when people do not allow God to move in their lives and do what you were naturally made to do, he said, the rocks will cry out. So you and I were made to respond to God. That's why I say that verse every week. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So God longs to, to receive. It's supposed to be reciprocated back to God. He made you. It's in Him we live, we move, and we have our being, not our, our death or our cold or our not doing. And I don't, I don't remember, but maybe two or three other times the Lord just asked me to, to go back to something I had already shared with you. He, but the Lord let me know on Sunday afternoon or Monday. I can't remember. He said, I'm not through with what I said last week. And for just a moment, I want to just, this is, this is short and quick. So I, I don't want you to be distracted because we've been dwelling today. Amen? Amen. A lot of people are not dwelling a lot of people are swelling from hurt and anger and stuff and being busy and tired and worried about time and schedule. And they can't get help because preachers will not be submissive to the Spirit of God. And people worry about clocks and people worry about people and all this. And, and so people miss out. And an old song we used to sing, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. But a lot of people are leaving like they came and in a lot of cases worse because the place you're supposed to find help and refuge and relief is more time conscious and people worried about running people off. Well, if you're hurting bad enough and you know that Jesus is the only answer, you will run to God instead of away from his house. You'll do that. And I'm telling you, it may be good this week, but in the world, Jesus said, you're ha so my day's coming again. I have a good week. I have a bad week. I have a bad week, bad week, bad week, and then there's another good one. There's coming a time, so the Lord said, you need to go back to Luke 9, and I, I'm going I'm to just do that. I'm doing what I'm told. He said to them all, if any man will come after me, follow, that means follow, chase, pursue, walk with, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. That's the key word. That's the money word, daily. And follow me. The cross is my flesh. The cross is me about to die to get out of church to go eat or go play ball or go shop or go do it. That, that's my flesh. Nothing wrong if you have to leave or people's left. I don't even know all that stuff. So rebuke the devil before he gets over on you. I don't know that. But I'm saying this is what my flesh wants to do. My flesh wants to get in and out of church a lot of times as quick as I can because I'm just, after all, I'm just soothing my conscience and I was raised to go to church. But I've got bigger fish to fry. I've got better things to do. That's my flesh. I don't want to give. I don't want to pray. I don't want to fast. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to help out. I don't want to be a part of the body of Christ. I, 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 I've, I've, I've served. I've shared. I, I give. So that, that takes care of my body. That, 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 that suffices. All of those things are my flesh. I don't want to say I'm sorry. I don't want to help you out. I want to ignore you and then pretend like I'm over you. We talked about this the whole three days in the men's thing. I don't want to entertain forgiveness because the wounds are deeper than my walk with Christ. Didn't mean to say that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's all my flesh. And here's the deal. You cannot follow Jesus until you pick up your cross. Your cross is your flesh until you nail it all, brothers and sisters, visitors, people watching or people that will watch. You cannot. You can tell yourself and preachers can tell you and books and conferences and things and bumper stickers can tell you you are following Christ. But if you are still allowing your flesh to have free rule and reign in your life, you cannot follow the Lord. And if you cannot follow the Lord daily because yesterday's victory won't do me any good today. Amen? I've got a new day. I've got a new telemarketer calling me. Amen. Amen. New telemarketer. 
And they got a 280 number. But they a telemarketer sitting in India in their underwear in a hut somewhere with internet connection. You think I'm lying and being funny right now. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I am. I know more about that stuff I wished I knew. And so you, 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 need, you need new today. You got a new cross to pick up today because you just saw your ex yesterday and you remember how they railroaded and framed you. Amen. I'm preaching and I don't even know who I'm preaching to, but I'm laying that out right now. So you got to get victory over it. And the only way you get victory over it is nail and cross and pick that thing up. Because you can't follow you and your flesh and Jesus at the same time. And the only way, Jesus travels light, you see. He travels light. My yoke is easy and my burden is what? Ain't no heavy cross and mess and all your flesh down on the ground dragging, making marks. Uh Uh-uh, it's up on your shoulder. If I can't get rid of it. If we can't Jerry Clower this thing, shoot up here amongst us, me or the polecat one's got to have relief. If I got to keep it, at least I'm not going to let it drag me down. What does he do? He said, lay aside the sin and the weight that so easily besets you. You got to pick it up. And you, I, Well, it's not going to hold me back because if I, if I entertain it, it's doing that to me. Take your fingers and do like that. Everybody, all of you that don't even want you, you, you're playing the part of the toad frog today. I still want you to do it. Nobody might be playing the part of the toad frog, but that, that, that's a good way of describing. All right? What's that, the sign of a what? If I'm in math class, what is that? Plus sign. Also looks like a what? Looks like a cross. All right, when I take it away and I do one like that, that's usually representing the what symbol, division symbol. Jesus came from the the heavens down to the earth. Divides when you take one number and divide it into another number. All right, Jesus came down here to this earth to go unto, into, live inside of my heart. He didn't think it was robbery to be divided, pulled away from heaven and the Father and all the worship of the elders and the angels to come so he could come into your heart. When he came into your heart, take your finger now from division. Now, that one's crooked. That's my Dion finger, so let's go with this one. That's uh, subtraction. He came down here. So he could subtract sin out of my life. Because you can't get to heaven and you can't live victoriously and successful with sin in your life. So he subtracted. He took away the sin and the shame that went with it. And he did that. Let's get it back up there now. Uh, I really encourage you to do this because I don't have a cord on this microphone and I can come to where you are until you pass the test. You got to do it. As my friend Eric Swillen says, children are watching. Do it. Unless you become as a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus came down here and he, he divided himself and came unto and into me. He took away that sin. He added so much value to me. You can rest, but listen. He added value to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have. You got to be old school to know this. You have given life to me he added he added value to me i'm worth something i'm the child of a king i'm part of a royal priesthood a holy na- a chosen generation he added value to me josh showed me a picture of a preacher yesterday worth four million dollars it was doing this bible study he said, don't you wish you was worth $4 million? I said, man, I'm worth more $4 million. <laughs> I 
I said, if that's all I thought I was worth, I wouldn't even post that. I'd sue somebody for putting $4 million beside me. Now, I might need you to loan me drink money when we leave church, but I mean, I'm worth $4 million and a whole lot more because Jesus is the only thing that's in my life. And that's priceless, you see. And when he does that, when he adds value to me, I now turn into a human being that can do what? Make a cross like that because that's the last symbol in the, in the multiplication we're talking about today, and that's the multiplying symbol. Now, I just gave you what I've been showing you with that cross. I just gave you a physical track to witness to people. Ha-ha. And... Even if you forget your pacemaker, unless you go over to China and steal something, you're going to have your track with you all the time. You know, that cuts your fingers off and take your hand if you steal over there. I wonder why I don't steal a whole lot in China. Anyway, uh, amen? Amen. So you have it with you. And now the blood's off my hands and my heart. I've given it to you. And don't use it to... Give somebody sign language, and y'all know what I mean with that. Children are watching, so I don't want to teach them if they don't know how to do that. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, some of you not catching on. <laughs> are we all there now? It, it's slow in here. I believe we worship you to death today. Do not give anybody the GTH. What was he talking about? Get the, don't give anybody the bird. Get the hen. He gave you these, and now the blood's off my hand, and you, you can witness to somebody just that easy. And in closing, did he say what I thought he just said? He did. I'm closing. It's as soon as I get through. I'm telling you, I am. So real quick, seven scriptures. Watch this. Keep in mind what you, dis, what you just learned. Acts chapter 5. Actually, it's, 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 it's really eight verses. Verse 42, last verse in the Bible. You're going to save somebody from hell just because of what you just saw, what you know, and what you're about to read. And you're going to change the world for Jesus. And I'm not just a salesman right now. I am a messenger of Almighty God. And I tell you that in the name of Jesus. Oh, no. He's sitting down. I'm tired. Y'all been sitting down for a long time. I'm tired, man. He's, no. Daily and daily in the temple. And in every house, they did not cease I told you about praying without ceasing. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. They did not cease. They did not cease teaching. You can practice when you get home. You know what to do. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. Now, in those days, what days? Those days, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, that's where we're trying to get to in our walk with Christ. Let me clarify this. You are not going to get credit or reward in heaven because you walked into a church every day of your life and then went home. I'm being honest with you. You're not getting, you're not, you're going to have to borrow your sleeping bag from Billy Graham or a sleep number bed or something because your mansion or whatever it is is going to be empty. He said, I give you, I go and I, I make a place for you. He didn't say one word about fully furnished when you get there. So, lay up what in heaven? Treasures. He didn't say just call them and they'll come. He said you lay them up. That's a lot of work. That screen that's behind me, we laid that booger up 
this week and about died in the process. It was only 877 pounds. I know I ain't going on the praise team. Juju, you better be up there singing like Sister Act next week. That thing ain't coming down. I've got baggy eyes and worn out hands to prove it ain't coming down. The roof might cave in, but the screen ain't going nowhere. By the way, let me tell you this, and this is not all the ADHDs and their butterflies. I'm giving glory to God. That's something that you ask for because you like the big words. You like the pictures. You like the scenery behind the scene. Amen? A lot of you don't be hypocrites now. You asked for that. And we responded. And if you want to respond, just, just go online and respond or put it in the bucket. <laughs> I'm not being funny. They didn't donate it. All right. Now we're going to finish reading. But the disciples were multiplying. That's what you have to do if you're going to please God. If you're going to be the fruit that is on the fig tree that don't get cursed. If you are going to lay up treasures in heaven, you've got to multiply people and you've got to learn what that is. You've got to learn what to do or you're going to be, you're just going to be upset with me in heaven one day because I didn't take time to tell you that. All right, and in those days when they were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve, that's the disciples, summoned the multitude of the disciples, that's the church people, the followers, and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren... Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. That's a very important word. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying, please the whole multitude, the whole congregation. The saying, what they just said, pleased everybody. As they And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parnamus, or Parmenus, and um, Nicholas, who was also a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God did what? It spread. And the number of disciples multiplied greatly. You just read a recipe and you may not have gotten it. It multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient. They were just going through the motions. They were coming in, doing their thing. And then they left and thought they were really superheroes in the hall of faith. Not. See, you can go through the motions even as a priest, preacher, worship. Uh, whatever we got going on here, all the things. But you can do that and not really be obedient to the faith. What's being obedient to the faith? I don't know what else to tell y'all. I mean, I have gotten it down to a preschool method, amen? Amen. I'm not being funny, not trying to be sarcastic, not trying to be hard. I'm telling you, you can see the Word of God go forth, you yourself on a personal level with all your scars and story can greatly impact the world around you just with your hands. No Bible, no, no back with scars on it. Know anything, you can greatly multiply the kingdom of God with just your hands. Cross math. Number one, you got to realize, same thing they did, that needs are 
being neglected. I'm talking about in the world, and now I'm talking about in the world and the church. The, the, the widows were getting... Now listen, you've read it with me, and I, I'm, I'm closing again. The widows were getting neglected because everybody was just kind of chilling out, coming in, doing their thing, but not obedient to the faith, and they were waiting on the 12 to do everything. And so they said, there's a better way. This is the business of God. There's a better way. Needs are getting neglected in our community and in our church. Number two, no one else should have to lay down their cross because they have to pick someone else's. That's what the disciples were saying. It's not good for us to stop doing this to go do something else that somebody else gifted could do and we could keep doing what we're supposed to do. Number three, we have to operate the kingdom of God as if it is God's business. In church, it is God's business. God's not concerned about how little your house is or how little your bank account, or how big it is, or how tight your schedule is. He don't care about all that stuff unless it gets in the way, and then he's concerned about that. He's concerned about his business. His business is souls, which is people, which are people. And we've got to quit pretending like stuff just happens. People just automatically get saved they wake up one day and say, you know what? I think I'm going to start going to friend like my co- I start going to church. I'm going to give my heart to Jesus like my co-worker, uh, like my husband, like my wife, like my children. They're not going to do that, folks. They wake up and they go about their daily business that is orchestrated and designed by hell because if you're not living for Christ in Christ, you are living according to the one who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. By the way, you've not heard this a lot like this, but Satan also has a plan for your life. Everybody's heard God has a great plan for your life. That is true, but so does Satan. The only thing about his is it's destruction and damnation and guilt and bondage and and all that. And Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus right now. You're trying to make yourself known in this building. You're playing in somebody's mind, and I call you out by the authority of the Word of God. Leave in the name of Jesus. Satan has a plan for your life. He's already took a lot of it and took years off of your life, but in the name of Jesus, close your eyes, everybody, in this building. God, in your name, be glorified right now. I call him out. I sense him. I know he's lurking. I know he's looming, and you are great. And you are greatly to be praised. I praise you and not he. In the name of Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. It's a business, church. It's a business. It is. Our job, our focus this year is to flow at this church. Not come in and get stale and stag. And we hope you figure out how to to move on in Christ. We hope and pray you figure out how do I become a character. We hope and pray that you bump in and to the right person and say, I'd love to serve as an usher. I'd love to help out with the men or ladies. I would love to come and be a part. I would love to teach. I would love to drive a van. I would love to be a part of this gym ministry. I'd love to be a part of the all the other. I'd love to. I, I used to operate a camera in college. I'd love. I'm real good with the internet. I'm. Uh, I know code. I know how to do HTML. I know all these things things, Dreamweaver, I know all these programs. I'd love to do it, but I don't know. We're we're, we're stopping that as of this year. It's all about flowing. You know what flowing is? That's finding and loving others wherever. 
People aren't going to figure it out. We tried to operate this ministry off of our cuff and hoping you would find your way how to get plugged in. No more. It's over with. I'm telling you, the cat is out. This is what it's all about. When you come into this church, there's a place for you, and there's a thing for you that you can do for God. We're, we're just making it known. We're going to make it so easy. There will be a lot more next week. And I am trying to be a little sensitive to time, but I really don't care right now because you are the key to multiplying the kingdom of God. People aren't going to come to hear me preach or watch us do this show every week. But they might come because your happiness for Almighty God in the kingdom, the reason you came back, might be the reason they show up. But you've got to know what to do. So real quick, in less than 60 seconds, I'm going to show you once again what we learned on a Wednesday night about three weeks ago when people gather and they drive into our parking lot. That's why we had umbrellas and coach the other week because we need ushers. We need people when they drive into the parking lot to experience Jesus Christ before they ever walk in the building. In the pouring rain, if somebody, an usher or somebody on the umbrella team walks out there and brings them in, They've already had their, uh, a need met. They've already felt Jesus, and they didn't even make it in the church yet. When they get in, Judy and other smiling faces, just when they walk into the door, they're going to know that somebody loves me enough to greet me. It's not cold, and I just got to come into an old church, and people got to frown. They're like, somebody beat them to come today, but I got somebody that's glad to see me. Nobody's been glad to see me, and I don't know when, except for the people I owe money to. Then, then they feel even a little more cared for then they're going to move for that and after the fast is over in about two weeks we've got the coffee connection it's going to be open again somebody in a hospitality uh, form is going to show you how to go and show them the people you're going to multiply and bring into the kingdom we're going to show them hey there's a little bit of uh, free continental breakfast we just want you to come in make yourself at home we love you and then we're going to move them on uh, through the service, we're going to worship God. We're going to preach the word. We're going to show you the word. And then people are going to give their hearts to the Lord. We're going to find them at the altar. There's going to be people that understand. People's got to be with people to bear one another's burdens at an altar. They got to know that they're not in this walk alone, see? If you had to go through the steps of salvation as you did when you were growing up, whether you've been a Christian a week, a month, 10 years, or 80 years, I don't care how. If you had to go through it again and the same support system that is available today, which is hardly none up until this year, and I'm being transparent and honest with all of you folks, a lot of people would be so chock full of hellacious pride, they wouldn't say it because the finger points back at leadership. And you don't have to amen that. I know that a lot is laid at my feet in the eyes of God. To whom much is given, much is required. I know I've got to stand before God. And behind the pulpit doesn't exempt me from anything. So people get saved, and then we've got what we call a loss prevention team. There's another name for it, and I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. But that's just somebody that just checks on them, whether they text them, message them through Facebook for the first month of their new life every week, once a week. We'll have over three people. You might want to be part of loss prevention. I can't, Opie, I can't do that. I can't even walk up there too. Get on the praise team. But you know what? I'm good with a pacemaker. There's your thing. Cha-ching in glory. You, you, you just might have you just might have put a installed a sleep number. The I-12 that has the reclining, the snore thing, you know? Yeah. You might have an I-12 just by checking on somebody. A lot of you just kind of like taking all this in. But this is a real deal right here. You can, if you read Acts, you'll see it. Then we move them on. We show them about a growth track. In the next few weeks, you're going to learn about a growth track. That's the same 30-minute class. The same one. We have one. The first Sunday of every month, then we have a different one the second Sunday, then another one the third, 
and then another one the fourth. We tell you all about the kingdom. One, we tell you all about multitudes, how the ministry started, what it's all about, how to be involved, and then we get you to a place where you can get involved. That, that, to tell you your first steps. Because a lot of people come, give their heart to the, the Lord, but then they feel like the long ranger. Nobody, I, I had to do this by myself. And so the world came in and the devil's just sitting there, yeah, it'll last about a week and then I am going to whoop tail on them. I'm going to come in, I'm going to come in like a flood. And I'm going to weigh them down. Then we're going to move them from there and we're going to let them know about refuel, the students, all the classes on Wednesday night. We're going to let them know about life groups and all those things. And there's people right now, we had two questions we got through. And this is unanimous from what I understand Wednesday night. People felt good, had a network of people around them. And, and, and if, if you don't have time for this, you can't benefit from it. And then we're going to move them from there. We're going to say, you know what? Now, that right there, everybody's called that next icon everything. But that's just a little serving dish. This is by then we get people to a place where they can now flow. This is how you can help. I can't do anything, Opie. I can't even operate a pacemaker. But I am awesome with an umbrella. There you go. I can't do anything, but you know what? I am good with just smiling at people. In fact, I said welcome to Walmart for 70 years. I was good at the door. And then they let us all go because they couldn't afford it anymore. <sighs> they can't. They're barely getting by from what I understand. I'm very sarcastic. There's something you could do. See, Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice serving serving a lot of you have been taught and trained and you are under the misguided direction that all you have to stand before God for is whether or not you gave your heart to Jesus that is incorrect Mark it down. Look it up on whatever you want to. Run it by whoever you want to. Your old preacher, your new preacher, your next preacher. Do what you need to do. But you're going to give an account not just for how you served or you didn't serve, but you're going to give an account for every idle word that's ever come out of your mouth. I'm telling you, that I'm just quoting the word to you. You might not have ever read it. It's in there. Amen. Somebody else that knows that? Amen. It's in there. Watch your mouth. Watch how you talk to people. And then after that, this is what I love. You see how we've taken care of people by moving them from place to place, being there with them through this whole journey, through this whole walk, and look at what they've turned into back where you and I started. They're doing what you were doing. See, the need's too great. I want you to close your eyes. And the men had an opportunity to kind of hear a little bit more about some important things that they could do. And it was probably between 25 and 30 men total between Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning that by Saturday morning, mid-morning, was really on the same page. And that's what all the believers have to do. And a lot of people just kind of, you know, you, you're chewing on this. It sounds right. And everything, that all the icons, straight out of the Bible. I didn't make this stuff up. Oh, by the way, that did come through one of the prayer services when I was minding my own business. This Lord says, this is how you got to start handling my business. Nothing's changed since Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nothing's changed, Opie. But over time, culture and people have changed things. You got to go back to the basics, son. Take care of people. Give people a place to do their thing. Give people a place to accumulate riches in heaven. Stop doing it all. It's not proper. Needs are getting neglected. Give people a place to serve me. And you focus on the word. 
So God, that's what we're going to do. That's our business. Is your business. We're not copying anybody, but we are walking through the book of Acts because that's where we read where great numbers occurred. So God, leave us with this thought that we are about to watch before we go out of this place back out there in Jesus' name.